Live on Teams now. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to us on uh, YouTube, to broadcasting you around the world, to across the country today on YouTube. Uh, fabulous to see you there. We're also, uh, this is obviously being broadcast to my class uh, at Talkie Girls Grammar School. So Talkie Girls Grammar School are also watching this live as well as it both being recorded. If you're watching from Talkie Girls Grammar School this morning, um, as normal, if you can leave the, any comments down the side on the stream there on Teams, that would be fabulous. And post any pictures down the side there or open your cameras up so I can see you. But if you can keep to mute. If you're, you're watching on YouTube, um, fabulous to see you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Morning, and you can leave any comments below and I will answer those as we go as well today. It's fabulous to have you here on a glorious day down here in uh, sunny Devon um, and we are going to be going through and making some wonderful choux pastry um, creme pâti and creme pâtissière. There it is up on the board there. I uh, hope you can see it on the board and also we're going to be going through the PowerPoint here which will have the step-by-step -step recipes. Now hopefully you've already got to the recipe uh, whether that's through social media and online or whether that's through the school this morning morning um, so you all already have the recipe but I will go through everything for you step by step so that we know exactly what we're doing to make some gorgeous um, choux pastry profiteroles and with the profiteroles a creme pâtissière filling now what is a creme pâtissière filling um, it is a very posh custard cream filling um, and we're going to be showing you how to make that as well today so welcome to us uh, to everybody joining us today I'm just going to um, say uh, where we are here uh, we Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, so uh, there we go. Um, there we they're online there and we're online here. All right. So um, let's get started now. Be before we start, um, as with all of these things, we're cooking and you're cooking at home. And if you're cooking at home, there are some inherent risks involved in the kitchen. So please um, be aware of those risks. You should not be cooking at home unless it's safe to do so. You have permission to do so. And there is a grown up at hand to help you, OK, and keep you supervised and in charge of everything. Because I can't be there with you directly. So um, make sure that there is somebody there um, to help and support you through this one. Okay, um, fabulous. Now we've got to play it safe in the kitchen. To play it safe in the kitchens, we need to know about getting ourselves ready. We've got to get our area ready and we need to get all of the equipment ingredients ready too. So to do that one, um, we have got some slides to remind you uh, of the different steps of what we need to go to through before we begin to cook. Now, before we do that, let's, let's have a look at what the uh, learning objectives are for today. So um, I'm just gonna quickly flip onto the screen behind me here um, and then we will get ready to go. So, um, uh, before we start to begin, um, let's go forward. Uh, let's have a look at everything we're going to be doing today. Oops, there we go. Um, so today, um, we are going to be looking at a shoe pastry profiteroles and creme pâtissière. So the learning just today is you are going to be making a, an advanced uh, pastry. Today, it's going to be a shoe pastry. It's spelled C-H-O-U-X, not C-S-H-O-E. Uh, okay, shoe. Um, it's a, a beautiful puffed pastry. Um, now, we're going to be looking at this pastry. Why? Because when you look at GCSE, GCSE, one of the highest skilled things we do for GCSE is indeed pastries. Um, we look at laminated pastries, um, which is like layered pastries. Um, we look at sweet pastries and we add additional ingredients in to enrich it with eggs and sugars. And we look at shoe pastries and pastries is one of the high skilled items for GCSE. So we're going to be looking at, this is why we're doing a shoe pastry. You're going to be learning about shoe pastries today. Um, what other things are you going to be learning about today? Well, we're going to be touching on uh, gluten and we're also going to be, uh, what gluten is, gluten formation, which is part of the structure of shoe pastry. And we're going to be looking at heat transfer, heat transfer, the different types of heat transfer that are involved in transforming the food that you make into something wonderful. OK, uh, now, before we begin, let's uh, let's get started. We need to look at getting, as I say, getting ourselves ready, getting our, our space ready, getting all of the equipment and everything we require ready. OK, um, and uh, here it is on the board there. Uh, getting ourselves ready, getting getting yourself ready, getting your area ready and collecting all the equipment you're going to need. And that's just up on the board here. OK, um, now, how do we remember that? We remember that using Hattie. Um, now, for the eagle-eyed of you who are watching at home, you might be seeing that we're using a Hodder education package here. This is a school's package that we use called a Hodder dynamic education package to um, present all of these slides to you this morning. So thank you to Hodder. 
But um, remember Hattie. Okay, um, so uh, what does Hattie stand for? Well, Hattie is a nice, easy way to be able to remember how we set up our areas. And we start it with every lesson for every uh, year. And here it is, very simply. Um, oh, I'm just going to turn those lights down a little bit lower so you can read it. But um, uh, a little bit later, let's go through. Um, H, very easy. Um, H there stands for wash your hands or and tie your hair back. Now that's if you've got long hair there um, that needs tying back, um, you need to make sure that that is all tied back and ready. I don't have to worry, I haven't got a lot of it there. Um, but you can wear a hat, it's another option. Now why would you do that? Some might seem a bit weird being at home in the kitchen and doing that. Uh, well, we don't want any hair in our foods. We don't want any uh, contamination in our foods, okay? So, well, that would be horrible, disgusting. So uh, make sure you've got your hair tied up or you've got your hat on there covering it. Hands, we need to wash our hands, obviously. That's really important, especially during these times we're in at the moment. Um, but we keep our hands clean, but even more so when we're cooking, that we keep our hands clean and we are ready to cook ourselves. Um, next one, um, as well as hands, we need to be making sure we have got an apron on. So I've got my apron down there, which I'll do shortly. We put the aprons on as well. Again, it might seem a bit weird doing that in your own home when you don't normally wear an apron when you're cooking. But again, we want to be looking at cooking to a high level and we want to be uh, cooking in a proper organized fashion and in a way that's going to be playing it safe. So wearing an apron and wearing a clean apron is really important. So you're going to be wearing one of those to protect um, is going to be wearing an apron. That's the A. T. T. The next one is making sure that your tabletop area has been cleaned down. So is your tabletop area clean? So I've just I've cleaned down my tabletop area. It's all lovely and clean. I've anti you might be doing an anti back spray, a sanitizer, washing that down with soap and water. Make sure your area is clean before we start to cook again, because we don't want any kind of contaminant there. So um, please make sure um, that you are doing that one too. Um, then off that, I've said another T. Another T is for of Hattie. Um, another T is for having a tray. And a tray is a really useful thing to have ready just so you can have all your equipment. And it could be it's a baking tray, but just making sure you've got all your equipment and ingredients together and organized. Um, and then the A, I, and the E of Hattie are ingredients and equipment. And we'll go through what you require in a moment. But before we start, let's get ourselves ready to start. Um, okay, uh, so um, let's check if we've got any questions before I before I do do that. Um, we're just going to go through and we'll see what questions we might have um, this morning before we begin. Um, uh, I'm planning to make the profiteroles um, later. I'm planning to make them at the weekend. Fabulous. So watching today and then wait, well, watching the weekend, that would be great. I'd love to see some photos. Um, love to send me some any photos of what you're doing um, uh, and what, where you're cooking from. And that would be great. Love to see these these uh, profiteroles finished. So if you're working at, working at Talkie Girls Grammar, you know how to do that one. Post it through Teams on the on the feed. That would be perfect. If you're watching at home on YouTube, um, please send those to, to us. We'd love to see some photos. You can find the email address and contact details uh, through the site there. Um, and we'll put, post those up for everybody. Okay, any other questions? Um, uh, we, we, we can't get all the we can't, right, to get to ingredients. Um, we're going to get in the ingredients of the weekend. So, yeah, we're in a lockdown larder situation, so you might not have all the ingredients with you straight away. I'm going to show you some options if you haven't got them, so you might things you might have at home. But uh, if you haven't got anything, uh, all the ingredients, you could... I'm going to say I'm going to give you some tips for lockdown larder situations to get hold of those ingredients uh, as we're in lockdown three um, today. Um, OK, uh, and uh, three weeks into lockdown three, I think it is now. Yes. So we've done that one. Uh, OK, let's move forward. Any questions from YouTube? Uh, no, no, uh, nothing from YouTube there. Um, OK, so we will get going. The first thing we need to do then is we need to make sure that we have cleaned uh, our, our hands. Uh, so we are going to, I'm going to do that one with you. Um, we're going to come over to my sink. We'll go around my kitchen. Um, so we'll come around. I'm just going to move the cameras around there for you. Um, we're going to move around to my kitchen just over here. And I'm going to bring the other camera with me as well. Um, so uh, let's go around to, oops. Hopefully you can see that. There we are. Um, I'm just going to come around there and we're going to be coming to wash my hands over to the sink. Fabulous. There we go. Um, right. Hopefully you can all see me there. I'm just going to move that one around. And this is my sink at home. Um, so we need to be washing our hands properly. OK, so to wash our hands properly, let's roll those sleeves up. And then we are going to use some hot soapy water to clean our hands. And uh, again, I know this is obvious, I'm going to move that out of the way so you can see a bit better. There we go. Uh, 
So uh, I know that's obvious, but um, it is important that we do that one. So using some soap, I've got some soap there. There we go. And make sure we get that soap all the way around. So we're rubbing our hands together, um, obviously, but then you wanna make sure you're doing the back of your hands between those fingers, back of the hands there between those fingers, um, making sure that's all properly cleaned. Round the wrists, there we go. Um, round those thumbs, make sure they're properly clean. And then you want some hot soapy water. So we need to make sure we've got some hot soapy water there to wash those hands as well. Okay, so just make sure we've got that. And again, rubbing your hands together, making sure you've got the back of your hands between your fingers, um, thumbs, back of the wrist, everyone seems to miss the back of the wrist, there we go. Now, you know how long this needs to be done for because we've been going over and over throughout this all around the country about what needs to be done. And so you know how to do this one. Um, it needs to be done for 20 seconds. And again, I know you know how to remember that now. It's happy birthday twice. If you've seen, seen that, you've got your hands nice and clean. Mine are nice and clean, let's dry those off. Um, now, I wanna be particularly clean today. So I'm also going to use some hand gel, uh, some, here we go, some antibacterial hand gel as well, just to make sure my hands are properly, properly clean. We can't over clean at the moment. There we go. Oh, lovely and clean. Perfect. Clean, 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 clean. All right. So next we're going to go and get our aprons on and we're going to get, make sure we've got ourselves um, all prepped up, ready to go. So let me just move that one back. Okay. Let's set that one back up. Ah, okay, welcome back. Um, now we are going to be moving from around the kitchen a bit more today um, for you. Also, uh, we'll when we move over to Hob and we look at heat transfer and we look at how we are going to be doing our shoe pastries and profiteroles for you. Let me just get that one back in. There we go. Um, okay, so the next stage is we need to be making sure that we have um, got our aprons on. So hopefully you are at the stage now where you're doing the same. I'm going to put my chef whites on and my aprons on today. Uh, there we go, move that around. Right, so I've got my chef rights on, but you, if you've got your aprons, that will be fabulous. Okay, I'm going to be using my Food Teachers Centre wonderful chef whites here, Food Teacher Association, that's the Association of Food Teachers Forum um, that covers all the teachers around, food teachers around the country. There we go, let's get ourselves all pinned up, ready to go. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to go over the top here. I'm also going to put an apron on top of this as well. I want to be properly, properly, it's a brand new, brand new, spanking clean, wonderful, uh, clean top there, apron. So let me get my apron up as well at the same time as you are. So if we're live doing this one at home, there we go. Let me get my apron on as well. There we are. Look, we're properly, properly ready to go. And hopefully you are too. Roll those sleeves up. Fabulous. That's it. Um, I am now, I uh, uh, washed my hands, I have my apron on and ready to go. I'm now going to go through all the equipment and ingredients that you're going to need for today's cook along with me to make our shoe pastries. Uh, right, uh, anyone, any other questions? We're getting the ingredients, they're getting the ingredients ready there. Hopefully you're getting the ingredients uh, ready at home. Let me go through what's involved in those ingredients and I'm going to talk you through those step by step. Here we have uh, ingredients and equipment on the board. Um, let's go ingredients first then. So ingredients first. Um, I'm going to just uh, make that a little bit uh, darker there so you can see. Let me move that around so it's a little bit clearer for you. There we go. Perfect. Hopefully that should be a little clearer for you there on the board. Uh, it's because it's a beautiful, glorious, sunny day out there this morning, uh, down, down here in sunny Devon, um, that it's uh, not quite so clear on the board. But I'll go through it step by step. First one is plain flour. We're going to be using 75 grams of plain flour, uh, and I've got um, my plain flour there. There we go. Um, now, it doesn't matter if you haven't got yourself plain flour. Um, uh, it, you can make it with a strong bread flour. In fact, it's often that ingredients do um, ask for some strong bread flour. So if you've got strong bread flour, um, that is good. It's got additional of this gluten stuff, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So that's good news. Um, we need that one for the structure of our pastry. And we're going to be talking about how you make that pastry uh, in a moment. And we're, when we also talk about raising agents, and we're going to be talking about not just raising agents and gluten, but also heat transfer. Great news. Um, so I'm going to just use a plain flour. Now, um, don't worry if you haven't got um, your plain flour there. Uh, maybe you, maybe you're gluten intolerant. Maybe maybe um, a celiac, and you need to go for. You can go for some um, some free uh, free from type. Uh, 
flour as well, some gluten-free flour. If you're using a gluten-free flour, what I would suggest you also want to do, because we want to get quite a, quite a nice structure in this one, you used to use some xanthan gum in there as well. So uh, we've got some xanthan gum, but if that's only if you're using like a gluten-free flour, just added some more protein to that one. So a little teaspoon of xanthan gum, gum mixed in with that one will work a treat if you're doing, doing it with that. So that's the flour, 75 grams of flour. Uh, okay, so um, Miss is uh, on YouTube. Uh, she said, is strong bread flour better than plain flour for this one? I would say in an ideal world, yes, it is, because you're going to get, uh, you're looking at wanting to form a gluten structure. Um, now, some pastries, you don't want any gluten in it at all. Now, what is gluten? Gluten is a protein structure. It's made up of long chains of amino acids. Um, it's made, it's, it's, it's stretchy and it's elastic and it gives us, actually gives us the structure in bread that's really required. Okay, so we do need that one um, in certain foods such as bread and, and in this shoe pastry too. Um, so we do need um, gluten in certain food products. And, and this is one of those. Other pastries you don't want it at all. So let's talk about if we don't want it. Uh, let me give you an example. Ah, jam tarts. Jam tarts, you want a lovely crisp, crumbly pastry, something that's gonna fall apart. You don't want something that's gonna be uh, tough or chewy. You don't want anything to be with a real strong, um, strong structure to it. So you want something that's gonna fall apart and it's gonna be lovely and delicate. So um, for those ones, uh, you definitely wanna be using a softer flour and a plain, uh, a lower gluten content flour. But for the shoe pastry, you want a structure there that's gonna hold its shape. Um, so we uh, strong bread flour will be perfect. So I hope that answers your question there on YouTube. Um, and that was from Mrs. Ry Mrs. Riley uh, Patterson. Uh, there, okay. Um, so I hope that answers your question there on ingredients. Next one we're gonna need is some butter. Butter, um, you can use, um, and I've got some dairy uh, dairy butter, but I know it's veganuary. So we're gonna uh, try, try and look at this. If, you, if you're veganuary, then you can always go with a, some sort of plant-based um, uh, fat there, or dairy alternative which is uh, absolutely fine and will work perfectly well in this recipe as well. And we're looking for 60 grams of that. So if you're, if you're getting all your ingredients together and running around the kitchen trying to do this right now, 60 grams is what you're looking for. Next one, don't have to find this one in the kitchen cupboard, it's 150 milliliters of water. So just, uh, there we go, 150 milliliters of tap water um, is just perfectly fine there. That's the, the next ingredient. Uh, then we've got um, some eggs. So we've got uh, two, two beaten eggs and we've got a chicken hen here and we're looking at a couple of um, beaten eggs. But again, you might be uh, thinking of um, veganuary or you might be a vegan. Uh, so you can use something like this. This is an egg alternative, uh, aquafaba. You can get it into a little packets there, um, which is great aquafaba. Now, um, if you can't, can't get hold of this, we're in lockdown larder situations. Um, so you, you can always get this from chickpea water. So if you've got a can of chickpeas, you can open up the can of chickpeas, the water that's inside that, you can actually use that instead of an egg. So that will work. So an alternative there. Uh, now, someone said about getting hold of flour. Okay, you can't get hold of flour during lockdown. So here are my top tip for uh, lockdown a lot of situations when it comes to flour. Um, Go it's somewhere that is close to you within your walking distance and local exercising. Uh, maybe you've got a pub or a restaurant. Um, they're obviously not doing as much service as they might be doing normally. Here's your way to support local industry and to get hold of your flour. So drop them a line, um, email them, phone them um, if you can, or get a to do that for you, um, and see whether they might have some spare flour because they, they probably have ingredients spare at the moment. And if you can pay online or uh, do it, do it that way, transfer some money to them online. And then I've had that where they leave the bag outside, wrapped up for me outside the pub. And you can walk down to the pub or restaurant and go and pick up that outside for them at a designated time that's safe to do so. Um, so that's a way of being able to do it and also support, supporting your local businesses and still be able to get hold of flour um, during lockdown line of situations. Um, so just some alternatives there to get hold of the bits and pieces that you need. Haven't got butter or fat, you can actually make it. Yeah, if you've got some milk, you can actually make your own butter. Now you might be thinking, how does that work? Um, jam jar, milk, shake it for about 15 minutes, and you'll all of a sudden the curtain wave will be split apart, and you can end up getting your own butter at home during a lockdown order situations. And one thing we have got at the moment is we've got time. So that might be an option to get all of your butter during lockdown. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next one. A little pinch of salt. Yep, um, a little pinch of salt is good there. It gets good for getting that gluten formation as well. Um, 
That's the ingredients you need for your shoe pastry. Let's move on. The next one you're going to need ingredients for what we call our posh custard cream. Mm, it's the best cream ever. Don't put any squirt cream in your fridge rolls. No, 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 no. You want to put beautiful, homemade, wonderful creme pâtissière. French, okay. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, pastry cream. Really, really nice. Uh, vanilla. We're going to use real vanilla as well. We'll talk about real vanilla in a minute. So you need a couple of eggs again, or you can use your egg alternative, or you can use your egg alternative you can get from a can of chickpeas. Um, you've got your caster sugar, okay? So a little bit of uh, caster sugar there. We've got some sugar ready to go for us there. Um, a little bit again of the plain flour. So we're gonna use some of that plain flour. Uh, milk, we said there's some milk. There we go. Uh, I've just got some milk from the milkman. Uh, and that's a good way of getting hold of milk during lockdown. If you had an issue getting hold of it, go and support a local, a local uh, milkman business. It's always good to try and get some more milk. Um, alternatively, maybe again, the January, you need to be using like a, you want to be using something like an oat milk or an almond milk or a dairy alternative, which works really, really well. So um, we're trying to do that as well. So looking at that, so you've got some big, um, for, for January, you can have a look at um, dairy alternatives. Um, let's go down now, get a pinch of salt, and then all oh, the most important thing of all, vanilla. Now, vanilla, I love vanilla. I'm a, I, it's amazing. It's got so many benefits to it, um, so many good things that are going in it. But vanilla, you can't farm vanilla. Vanilla grows. It's like a plant that grows up a vine that grows up a tree in the rainforests. Okay, so certain really hot climates uh, along uh, the equatorial belt um, where you've got the rainforest there, you'll find this growing up around the trees. Okay, people have to actually climb up these trees to go and get these vines, these long green beans of uh, vanilla. Then they dry those out in the sun and then they split and they get that dark color, that black or brown color. Then you can open up the seed, uh, open up those pods, and then you've got this tiny little vanilla black seeds in there, which are just just divine. Now, we need to support those local farmers out there. We need to be buying real vanilla. None of this uh, synthetic stuff. So if you've got none of these like yellow bottles of vanilla flavoring, they're made from a, a petrochemical, vanillin they call it. Um, who wants to put petrochemicals inside their, their food? Not me. Um, so um, you want to use it, not yellow, vanilla It's not yellow, it's a dark brown blacky colour. Um, so you want to be finding something like a vanilla extract or even a vanilla paste. And um, this is the one that I always use. This is uh, local to us down here in Devon, the company that imports this one. This is called Little Pod. Um, it is brilliant. Uh, I'll get through so much of this. Little Pod you can get from online or um, you can get from any good retailer. Uh, but um, this is posh vanilla. And you can see in here, it's the best vanilla I've ever found. But people always ask me, what vanilla do you use? And this is it. You can actually see, oh, the black seeds in there and look how many vanilla pods are actually in there. This is gorgeous. I'm putting it right up to the camera there so you can see the black. It's mmm, 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 mmm. It is absolutely gorgeous. So if you can use real vanilla, vanilla pods, vanilla extract or a vanilla paste like this one from Little Pod, um, it's really, really good. Um, and it will just uh, really bring your creme patissiere up and lift it up. Um, I know we're in lockdown in other situations, so we can do the best that we can when it comes to flavorings. Um, but um, uh, I've said there, an extract or a paste would be perfect of real vanilla. Okay, uh, that should be ready. You should have now have all your ingredients ready. Uh, we can have some thumbs up to make sure we, mm, oh, a thumbs up and a tasty thumb up. Let me wipe that down. Let me get put some, put some water here. And dry that one off. Oh, there we go. Uh, right, let's, uh, let's get back to it. Uh, have we got all the ingredients? Thumbs up to make sure you've got your ingredients ready. Looks like we've got our ingredients ready. Uh, fantastic. We looks like we're thanks down on YouTube. Brilliant. Uh, so let's move on to equipment then. So we come from ingredients. Uh, let's go to equipment. So let me quickly go through the ingredient equipment. You're going to need some mixing bowls. Da -da 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 -da, lots of mixing bowls. Fabulous. Um, you're going to need some um, small bowls, which we've got some small bowls. We've got little bowls, big bowls, big, all sorts of different kinds of bowls here. Um, you're going to need some wooden spoons. Very important. Um, you're going to need a small pan. Ta -da, some pans. Uh, there we are, a little saucepan. Um, we are going to need um, a metal tray. So here we have our metal tray, um, um, a baking tray there. You are going to need um, a cooling rack. Here we have a cooling rack. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, um, if you haven't got a cooling rack, um, again, we're, we're not at school, so you might not have all these things. Um, here we are, a little tip for you. Um, if you use the grill pan, sometimes they've got like a, a grill pan piece in there. You can use, lift that out and use that as a cooling rack. Um, uh, tablespoons and teaspoons, so we need to be using little spoons, little spoons, as well as big spoons today, but tablespoons and teaspoons. Um, you're going to need uh, some forks, 
um, a whisk and some weighing scales. Um, yep, some weighing scales. Here we have some weighing scales. But I will show you how to do this one, even if you can't do weighing scales. We'll do it in tablespoons and teaspoons for you as well. Uh, okay, I think that's that's pretty much it. I'm going to show you some other equipment you can use when we get back over to the kitchen over here. I've got some other bits of equipment we can use, and I'll, I'll talk you through those ones as well. Hopefully, you've now got all your equipment and ingredients ready. I'm just going to come up with the uh, recipe for you. Uh, okay, any other questions or queries there? No, nope. it looks like we're all ready to go um, on there. Fabulous. Um, I'm just going to get the next slide up for you. Here we go. And let's go on to that for you. And we'll get the step-by-step -step recipe. Okay, so if you've not um, used this before, um, these, and for the girls at Tokyo Grammar School, you know how it works. So step-by-step, -step, all my recipes are in 10 step-by-step -step, uh, pieces, and we're gonna go through that one together. Well, literally, I'll go through each of these steps with you, and we will cook with you as well. There are photo step-by-step -step recipe cards there ready for you to do, so everyone at home can do it at the same time as me. I'm just gonna grab um, some uh, the little recipe cards for myself as well. Let's grab those and grab the uh, box. Just give me a moment, I'll be with you in two, two secs. There we go, we need some of those, some of those. We're gonna need some of them and some of those. We're gonna need one of those, two of those. Um, good, excellent. We need all of that. Wonderful. And I need to grab some of those as well. Let's grab some of those and some of those. Be with you in two seconds, everybody. Okay. Um, just missing one more ingredient for myself. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Right. I'm ready to go. I'm back. I was just missing a couple of bits there for myself there, but got it all for you, ready to go. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do, as it says on the board up there, is we need to get our tins ready. So we need to get our tin that we're gonna be putting baking it in ready. Now it says there we need to grease or, and sprinkle it baking tray with some water. Why do we need to sprinkle it with water? What's all that about? <clears throat> Let me explain. Uh, we're gonna be going through this in a bit more. now. Let's first of all grease it. So what am I gonna to use to grease it? Well, I've got here some oil there in a little pot and I've got myself a little brush, a little pastry brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to brush it or paint it um, with oil. There we go. Da -da -da -da. Just going to paint all over the top. Beautiful picture there this morning. Lovely, I feel like I'm in art here. Greasing this here. Now, uh, if you haven't got a, paint, uh, a pastry brush to brush that or grease it, you could use, oh, let's, let's, you could actually use a clean paintbrush. Mm -hmm. So you could actually use a clean paintbrush, that, that's, that's another option. Um, you could use some butter with your fingers and you could just brush, um, grease it that way. Um, however you want to do it, just make sure you have got a properly greased tray because we do not want your shoe pastries um, buns to be uh, sticking. So that is a properly greased tray now. I'm happy with that. You could use um, a spray, um, if you want to use a spray light type ones, and you could spray that as well if you wanted to. That's another option there this morning um, to grease your tray. Um, my tray is beautifully greased. You can see that just reflecting in there. Beautiful. Now the next thing I'm going to do, odd one this one, I've got some water here um, and I'm going to sprinkle some water over the top. Ooh. Why am I sprinkling water over the top? This is an odd one. Why would I be doing that? Anyone any idea why we'd be sprinkling water over it? Uh, let's have a look. Let's see if we ask some questions. Go down the side there. Um, anyone will have a guess? Talkie Girls Grammar, if you want to put your, uh, any questions, why you answers, why do you think I'm sprinkling water on there? What happens when uh, you, what happens when you heat that water up? Um, Anyone any idea? Put it in the comments down the side there. Any idea why we put water on there? What happens to the water when we heat the water up? That's right, evaporates, changes state, and forms what? It's no longer in a water, it's no longer in a liquid, it forms a 
Any more questions? Are we getting anything coming through? Steam, hurrah, it's gonna form a steam. Now that steam is gonna be part of what happens um, with our pastry. That steam and that evaporation of water is actually gonna aid our pastry um, and to make a wonderful profiteroles. And we're gonna be using water, quite a bit of water, inside the actual profiterole mix because we want lots of steam today. Um, why is that? Well, um, water and flour makes a bit of sticky stuff that we call gluten. And I'm gonna explain how that works in a bit more detail in a moment uh, with the proteins that are inside flour already and how we turn them into gluten that's gonna form a structure to our shoe pastry. Um, now the water is going to be doing, going to say from a liquid and it's gonna be evaporating, it's changing state. As it does so, the volume will expand. Okay, and then it will dis disappear completely. So what this is going to do as it expands, uh, okay, as, as the, it becomes from a liquid to, um, to steam, okay, to a gas, um, it's going to, the volume is going to expand. As it expands, if it's got nowhere else to go, it's going to do something. So uh, let me have a look. Um, the gluten structure, if we can imagine the gluten structure is my balloon, here we are. Um, I'm filling it up with uh, a gas. And you can see, as it expands, we're getting this beautiful shape, which is going to be our profiteroles as well. By actually raising what was something flat on the surface, is raising it up. So the steam becomes a raising agent. Now, uh, there are lots of names for a raising agent, like every good secret agent. Um, this, ra uh, this thing we call raising agent it comes by many different names. Uh, it's not like 007, but it has lots of different names. So um, we might have raising agents um, that are physical because they're changing a physical state. So we've got this steam is one. It's going from a liquid to a gas. And by doing so, it's raising up our profiteroles. That is what we call um, uh, physical um, aeration. And um, what's happening is that's physically raising it. It's a physical raising agent. It's physically raising up that way using that change of state. We also have chemical raising agents. Chemical raising agents is when we put two chemicals into our food, they react with one another and they're given the correct conditions. And then they expand or raise up our foods as well as a raising agent. Now, the most common chemicals that we use are an acid and an alkali. We put the acid and the alkali together they react, uh, that reaction um, forms a neutral salt, but also in the process, it creates a gas. That gas, CO2, is created inside our foods, foods and that ex then expands our foods, which helps our foods to rise. Now, um, putting acids into food might seem a little bit odd, but what we sort of acids we put in are edible acids. So we put add edible acids with an edible alkali. So we have things such as, um, well, let's have a look. We've got uh, do, 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 um, acids and alkalis. We've got a cream of tartar, which is an um, uh, an acid or tartar tar tar acid. Um, we've got cream of tartar there, and we've got bicarbonate of soda. Mm, bicarbonate of soda. You might have seen that one in the shops. Um, mixing those two together, you have something that we have got called. Baking powder. Baking powder is a combination of dry acids and dry alkalis. Mix those two together, you'll see a neutralization reaction and that during that reaction, um, creating a neutral salt, you also have this gas produced that helps to rise up our food. Raising agent, baking powder or cream of, uh, cream of tartar and uh, bicarbonate soda. And you can actually buy those individually. You can so buy those individually, combine them together. Um, there are other acids that, are, uh, acids that we can eat. Uh, if you think of your fish and chips, you got your lemon on the side there, that's an acid. You've got a vinegar, that's an acid. Okay, so um, you've got different acids that you can actually eat in your foods, but like I say, a combination of the two is another raising agent, but that's a chemical raising agent. So let's write this down. I'm gonna write this down before I forget them all. Um, so uh, on the board here, let me just uh, go to the book. Raising agents, we like raising agents, and then we're gonna talk about heat transfer as well. Raising agents, raising Agents, raising agents. So we've got different sorts of raising agents. We have got the ones we just talked about before, physical, physical. And that is your water turning to steam 
Then you've got your chemical. The sort of thing you might have in cakes is an example there. Chemical, which would be acid and alkali. Um, and the acid we're saying in this one is, this one is a very simple one. It's the acid is a cream of tartar. Ta -ta. And the alkali on this one is bicarbonate soda. Bicarbonate soda. Together, they make baking powder. And when you add a liquid to them, because to, at the moment they're dry, but you add a liquid to them, you will end up with da, 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 CO2, carbon dioxide, okay? So um, we've been producing a gas that way. Now we've got physical, chemical. Now the other one you think might be more aware of when we're talking about raising agents is bread. Bread, obviously, we mentioned bread. Bread rises. Now a traditional bread, bread mix, you could get, you can use bicarbonate soda to make a bread, what we'll call a quick bread or a soda bread. Remember the soda there? obviously. Um, but you can also, um, you might have this sort of thing to make bread. And this is a microorganism that blows bubbles in. It is um, some yeast. You might have some easy bake yeast, or you might have made your own sourdough yeast in lockdown on the previous lockdowns. But uh, yeast is a biological, so we've got biological raising agent. Biological, uh, uh, uh. biological, chemical, physical. Biological is yeast. Now we have to yeast. Now with yeast, we need to give it something to eat, give it something to drink, and we need to give it enough time and the conditions that are favorable for it to be able to blow the bubbles in. That time we call proving. It's not as quick as a chemical raising agent. It's not as quick as a physical raising agent, but it is a raising agent nevertheless. So we've got uh, physical, chemical, biological raising agents. Um, all, all of these, are forming something which we talk about in GCSE a little bit more. They're adding air in, so they are aerating our mixture. Aerating, there we go. We are aerating our mixture, whether it's physical aeration, chemical aeration, biological aeration. There is another type of aeration, uh, mechanical aeration, where you literally beat air in. If you ever made meringues, we've got um, that sort of thing. We're gonna be beating air in uh, a little bit later with our shoe pastries as well. All about aeration. Lots of science today. I love it. Uh, we haven't even started yet. Uh, okay, so um, we have just got our tin with some water on, and that water is going to form steam, and that's going to help with the rise of it. It's also going to do other things with that. Um, it's going to do, which again, we'll talk about GCSE, is gelatinization of the flour, which uh, is part of the process of um, making the structure of it as well. But we'll come to that GCSE. Um, no need to worry about that one just now. Okay, um, we're gonna need the flour. So let's talk about this flour. Um, we talked about it on YouTube. We've mentioned about, ah, yes, well done on YouTube as well. Steam is the correct answer there. We've got it on YouTube and uh, we've also got this at Talking Girls Grammar School this morning. Brilliant, you're all getting the right answers today. Um, so um, let's talk about the flour. We said about this plain flour. We're gonna, I'm gonna use a plain flour. You can use a strong bread flour if you've got that one. That would probably be more advantageous. Um, and we explained why that'd be more advantageous. We're gonna be using that, but we're gonna be sifting it in really quickly. We're gonna be shooting that in to our mixture. So it has to go in real quick. So to do that one, we're gonna need to get some of this stuff. Now you can use just a, pe a piece of normal A4 paper that you've got lying around. We use a bit of grease proof paper. And you want to um, cut it up into a square, an oblong or a square. Let's say you can just use any old sheet of paper you, you've got here that's clean. Um, you can use just a plain piece of paper. I'm just going to use a bit of grease proof because I've got lots of it lying around. You're going to be folding it up in half to make a funnel. Literally just uh, folding a piece of paper in half like that. We're going to be putting our flour into that. Now, why are we doing that? We need to get the flour in really, really quickly. We need to shoot the flour in, as we say. So we're going to create, um, we're going to create a little bit of a, 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 like I say, a little funnel to shoot it in really quickly. So we're going to actually put our flour onto that, and we're going to weigh it straight onto that. Um, saves ourselves on washing up as well, which is always a bonus. Um, we're going to be putting in there 75 grams of flour. So let me just uh, get down here. We're going to be coming down. Move, move the camera down so you can see that one. Oops, there we go. Um, oops, sorry, one moment. 
Uh, so I have got uh, there, move that brush out of the way. Um, I have got here um, my flower on the work surface. Oh, sorry, my work surface there. Hopefully you can all see that one there. Um, we just got, uh, do, 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 do. there we go. You can see it down there um, what I'm doing. Brilliant. Um, we're going to be putting our flower straight onto here. Now we need to be getting on here 75 grams. Now if you haven't got uh, scales at home, that's fine. I'm going to show you how to do this one with spoonfuls. So you can still do this one really quickly. You can best do this one and produce this one um, without having to use scales. So I'm going to use a tablespoon. Remember the tablespoon and teaspoon. Tablespoon and teaspoon. The little one, little one is a teaspoon. Is the little one? I'm a teaspoon. This is a tablespoon. I'm going to use a tablespoon on this one, and we're going to be going with 75 grams of it. So how many tablespoons is that? If you're, if, if you haven't got your scales, we're going to be putting one, two, and normally that's so we are. Three. How much have we got? Now it's roughly this one, but you should be measuring this one out properly. There we go. Oops. Yeah, three. I'm just going to be taking a little bit. I'm going to throw a three. There we go. 75 grams. So three large tablespoons, heaps of tablespoons will do it, but 75 grams onto my piece of paper there. How do I know that? I have my scale underneath there. There we go. Um, so I've got my uh, my little piece of my little funnel there, which I've made, it's in a piece of paper. You can, see, you can use a little piece of line paper for that one with my 75 grams. And I've got my tray ready as well. So that is ready to go. We are uh, we are ready to go with that one. Let's move forward onto the next one. All right, let's uh, look, look at the next ingredient we need to We need to beat two eggs into a bowl. So let's get two eggs beaten up into a bowl. Here is my bowl on the book here. Um, like I say, if you want to use an egg alternative, you can do, but I'm just going to uh, get that one in there. Now there's my bowl ready to go. And I'm going to get my two eggs in here. Here we go. In they go. You need the whole eggs for this one. Later on, we're going to be talking about something else, but for the moment, we're just going to use the whole eggs. Put those on the way. There we go. Two eggs into that one. Now, uh, it says beat the two eggs into the small bowl. So get your fork ready. There's my fork. And we're just going to beat it up. Just beating those eggs up. There we go. Now, you can start to see there that it's all combining. Oh, I'm beating some air into this as well at the same time. Do you remember that one? Aeration. We've got a lot of aeration. Now, I could have added more air in there, and I, I skipped a step there. Um, I could have also sipped the flour. Um, it's always good to sieve the flour beforehand. I'm um, sieving the flour. I've um, got some more air in it there as well. I could have got lots of things with air in it with this one. Here we go. So we've got that whisked up there, beaten up, rather beaten up. Perfect. Let's put that one to the side there. So we've now got egg, flour. The final thing we're going to do is butter and water. So for this one, grab your saucepan. There's my saucepan. And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm now going to add the butter and the water. So butter, how much butter do you need to put into this one? Well, the butter there, let me go and put that one on. There we go. The butter on this one, you need to be putting into this one 60 grams of butter along with 150 milliliters of water. So 60 grams, you can use, um, I'd say, either dairy or the dairy alternative that we talked about. Uh, and a nice, easy way to, remove, to do this one, if you haven't got scales, you'll find that along the top of the edge here, I don't know if you can quite see that one there, um, but actually they've got the uh, measurements on these ones. So you've got 50 grams, 50 grams, 50 grams. So you can actually slice up your butter along the outside there. And the same with the dairy alternative as well. If I just show you there, it does just show you on the side there. So if you don't have scales at home, you can use that one. And you can see there, there's 50 grams, 50 grams, 50 grams. So you can work out roughly, if you haven't got scales, how to do it. So I've got my scales here, though. Um, luckily enough, I'm going to be able to do that one. I'm going to bring in there 60 grams of the butter into there. Uh, here we go. 60 grams in there. One. Oh. Two. Large tablespoons. Oh, maybe a little bit more in there. Just a minute now. There we go. Um, two large tablespoons should do that one. Um, or we have to say measure it out with scales. Um, if you haven't got it, that's what we do. In with that butter, we're then going to add in the uh, water. So let's go with the water into this one. Going to add the water. The water into this one is 150 millilitres of water. Going to be going into this one as well. 
Okay, so let's add that water in. Can we just um, put that one there? There we go. Uh, right. Okay. So we've got the we've got the uh, butter in there. We're going to add the water. So this is my 150 milliliters of water that I've measured out already. Uh, so if you've got a large glass like this, and you've got, uh, you can see that it's about half a glass. I've actually measured it out because these actual glasses are measuring glass as well. But 150 milliliters of that, that is going to go straight into our saucepans there as well. All right. So we've got the water in there. We've got the butter in there, um, ready to go now. Um, all pastry is made um, using, uh, let me just zoom out again, there we go. Uh, all pastry, um, when we're making it, is made with flour and a fat, and then it's often bound together with, with water. But most laminated pastries or, or sweet pastries, so that's a short crust pastry for your jam tarts, or your laminated pastry, which is layered pastry for puff up, uh, for croissant, or, um, so you can have uh, ones there, puff pastry, or rough puff pastry, your Cornish pasties or Devon pasties um, in there, rough puff. They all require your butter to be really, really cool cold butter in there um, that you break down and you layer up or you put it in between the flour there, but very, very cold. Uh, this pastry, a bit like hot water pastries as well, which you can do with some raised, hand raised pies. This pastry though, requires your butter to get really hot. It's an odd one. Um, and uh, requires it to be really, really hot to make it. So we can, we're can we gonna be talking about that in a moment and how we heat this up. So we're gonna be talking about something called heat transfer and a few different types of heat transfer, three different types of heat transfer here we're gonna be talking about. Um, the first one is um, we are gonna be doing conducted transfer. We're gonna put some heat into the bottom, okay? We are, this pan will conduct heat. It's a metal pan here and it's gonna conduct heat. So we use conducted heat transfer. Um, then uh, we're gonna be heating this up and you can see inside there um, that that has got uh, water and it's going to have melted butter in there as well so that is going to be a liquid and now as the liquid starts to heat up you can transfer it through liquid or air what's going to happen is the hot part is going to become less dense rise to the top it's going to cool down it's going to come back down to the bottom as it becomes more dense then it's going to be heated up at the bottom where it's conducted heat so it's rise up to the top and then it's going to cool down then it's going to come back down to the bottom and this is what we call convection Heat transfer we call convection. And you might have heard of this in geography, uh, convection currents in geography, uh, when we're looking at um, water there movement, or you might have convection in other areas around the sea, convection currents. You may have done this in science convection as well, but um, this is convection in food. So we've got uh, heat transfer through conducted heat, through convected heat, uh, an easy, a good example is a, a lava lamp. If you've got a lava lamp, that's a really good visual example of convection. So that moves around, it goes less dense, rise to the top, cools down. Um, you can do it in air. You might have a box in your kitchen that heat up um, air in, and it goes up to the top, and cools down, on, up to the top, cools down. A convection oven, they call it. Uh, right, so convection, uh, conduction, convection, and then we're going to be using some radiated heat um, uh, a little bit later on when we cook this one as well. So we can, uh, we're going to be getting some heat that's going to be radiated onto this, which is which is coming on from uh, another direction. So heat transferred through and directly into, onto the food that way. Okay, uh, enough heat transfer and science there. Conduction, convection, radiation. Uh, let's get on with the cooking. So what we're going to do is we're going to melt this butter. You can see there, melt the butter and the water. To, uh, we'll stir it with the water. When it starts to boil, like properly boil, we're going to get that flour and we're going to shoot it in. We're going to throw it in, okay? Um, delicately, we don't want it to splash onto us, but we're going to do that one. Uh, right, uh, and once we've done that, we're going to use a wooden spoon and we're going to beep, 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 all this together, really vigorously, vigorously beating it together because we want to capture as much air into this one. We're going to be aerating it um, by mechanical means as well, uh, as well as it's going to be able to, because it's going to have water inside it, it's going to have um, steam, it's going to be mechanical, uh, it's going to have physical aeration going on inside the one. So the steam's going to go. Lots of different food science. I love this one. Um, we can talk about, and we talk about lots more of this at GCSE. It's all about how food works together from science. Um, right, so we're going to do that one. And then we will stir it in the eggs when it's cooled down um, to make this one, and you will have a beautiful pastry. I'm going to talk about what's happening. While we beat this together, I will talk about what's happening with regards to um, gluten development. Right, uh, if you want to come and join me, 
Um, I'm ready to go to the hob. We're going to go and do this one with the hob, and we're going to be combining it and making our shoe pastries. The actual process is quite uh, simple, but there's so much going on, so much going on. Right, um, so I'm going to bring you over. I need to come up around to my kitchen and turn you back around to my hob. There we go. So let's uh, zoom in a bit. There we go. And we're going to zoom into my kitchen there. And we're going to go through to the hob. Let's turn you around there so you can all see that. There. there we go. There is my kitchen. And we're going to go over to the kitchen with my saucepan. So I've got my saucepan there. And I've got my flour ready to go as well. Okay, so let me just move that one out of the way. Okay, let's take those over. I've got my saucepan there, which has got my butter in, and my water. I've got my flour already in my piece of folded up paper. And the only other thing we need to get is that beaten egg that we had from earlier. We're just going to use that one a little bit later once it's cooled down. Okay, um, hob safety. You'll notice that I put the pan around here so the handle is not pointing out. It's really important, put the heat on, but the pan handle is not pointing out. Now, why is that important? Because we do not want um, me to be knocking into it. Oh, because if I knock into it, oh, it's going to go everywhere. So make sure the pan handle is not sticking out. We'll put that to the side. Um, we're using a wooden spoon. We're not even going to use a metal spoon because if I use a metal spoon inside the heat, like the pan, it's going to conduct heat and I'm going to burn my fingers. So I'm using a wooden spoon with this one to stir this one up. Here it is. That water is just starting to simmer. Now simmering is like lemonade. If you think of the little bubbles around you have around the outside when you're doing having uh, lemonade, that's the same sort of thing, that's simmering. What we want to happen is it to boil. So we're thinking of like a bubble bath, so it's like literally bubbles on the top all over. So we want it to boil, we don't want it to simmer. Um, we do, we start, it'll start to simmer at first, but we want it to go up to a boil. So that's what's happening now. Um, I've got there. Also be careful, you might think, oh, it's gonna spit at me. I, I don't know what's gonna happen. Remember, you are in control of the heat. You are in control. If it is, take it off, take the pan off the heat. That's absolutely fine. Give it a little stir. Turn, turn the heat down. You know, you're in control of the heat. Do not let the heat be in control of you. You, know, you are the master of your kitchen, okay? You are a master chef. Uh -huh. Right, so that is nearly all melted. Um, even though I've taken it off the heat, there is enough what we call residual heat. There's enough heat in that pan already from the, because it's conducted the heat for it all to start melting up even more. So that's now just melting away, bringing it up to the boil. There we go. Wonderful. Now, with the water and the butter, we have created a liquid. Now, they're an unstable emulsion, which again, we'll talk about GCC, but I mean, basically it means the water and the oil don't look like they're gonna mix in there. In fact, they, they, they look like they're kept separate. Um, you need an emulsifier to join them. But um, what we've got here is we've got a liquid oil and a liquid water in there. And they're gonna mix with the flour. Now, when we mix uh, flour with water, um, this is when we have, and we, we have action with that, this is when we have um, our gluten development. We create some sticky gluten. All right, that has properly, properly melted. Um, and that gluten is really interesting stuff. Um, that gluten, it derives its name from, uh, it derives its name from the same thing as glue. Here we have a glue stick. Um, it's sticky like a glue stick, um, and it actually um, is called glue tin. An easy way to remember, if you think back to your parents, they might have actually had glue tins at school, or even stick glue tins. Um, but this is, we're gonna be creating gluten in a minute uh, with the liquid and the flour, but we need to shoot the flour. That is properly boiling now. All right, here we go. Here is my flour. I'm gonna go straight in. Now be careful not to splash yourself here. So we're going to put it in quickly, but lower down, lower it down so it's not going to go onto you. All right, here we go. One, two, three, go! In it goes. Very quickly. Stir, 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 stir. We're going to put that off to the side. 
Okay, let's move that to the side. And I am now stirring, 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 stirring. Now, there is a lot of liquidy stuff in there. And you remember the conduction and then convection. What's the, when you were boiling, what was happening was it was boiling up and the hot air uh, become less dense, it rises to the top, then it cooled down way to the bottom, and that was convection of liquid inside. Now I've added the flour. I'm stirring this together really, really quickly. Okay, I'm going to take you, turn off the heat now. I'm just going to stir this together so that we can make some beautiful sticky gluten. Now, if I just show you to the camera, hopefully you can see that, what's starting to happen. That's starting to come away from the sides of the bowl now. And I'm just beating, 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 beating. Can you see that coming away from the bowl there? Um, that's just coming away. And let me just get a bit closer for you so you can all see that one. Um, there we go. And I'm just beat, 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 beat. And that's coming away from the pan there. And I'm just beating it together. Fabulous. Whoa, I'm beating air into this one. I'm combining it. I'm creating gluten. So much food science going on in here. Um, gluten, by the way, gluten. Gluten has got two properties. It is both elastic and plastic. Okay, so elastic and plastic, we've talked about that before. Um, but to remind you of what that is, you remember, elastic, that stretchy balloon is elastic, okay? Um, that's a plastic, it's like slime. Can we go with a bit of slimy stuff? It means you can mold it into a shape and it goes back. So we've got plastic and elastic, okay? Um, it's got two properties. Where does it get those two properties from? Well, it gets those two properties from two proteins that were originally inside that flour. One called gliadine, one called glutenin. What we've done is we've added a liquid to those gliadine and glutenin, and we are beating these together, are really beating these together, and we're gonna create that gluten structure in there, filled with water. There we go, right. Now, we need to add the egg to this now, uh, and we need to also cool it down. It needs to be stirring continuously. What would happen if we added egg to this hot mixture now, this boiling mixture? Any answers? Let's have a look. YouTube, uh, Talking Girls Grammar. Can you tell me what would happen if we added egg now to this mixture? Anybody who's going to be cooking smart. What would happen if we put egg straight into this mixture? Would we have something that is lovely and silky, or would we have something that is uh, horrible and lumpy? Let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Who's gonna answer first? Uh, who, who's gonna answer? Go on, someone doing Talky Girls Grammar or YouTube, I don't mind who's gonna be cooking stuff the market. What would happen if I added egg to this hot boiling mixture? Anyone wanna guess, anyone wanna guess? Okay, who's gonna be cooking stuff the market? Who's gonna be, hey, we've got Talky Girls Grammar, we've got a good one, what's gonna happen? It is going, it's gonna be egg with cooking it for me. Yes, it would scramble the egg, perfect. That's what would happen. So we have to keep this mixture moving, we have to cool it down, and we have to add the egg at the same time. How could we do that one? Well, we could use a whisk, a whisk the eggs in. So using mechanical action to whisk in um, uh, the egg, and also get more air in there as well. That would be a nice quick way of doing it. Um, if you're using a whisk in a pan, I'm using stainless steel pans with a metal whisk, that would be fine, because it's not gonna spread size. If you've got black, um, same as steel uh, pan you're using, don't use metal, use a rubberized um, whisk. I could use that. Um, that would be one way of doing it. I could go to the next stage, higher up, and I could use um, one of these. I could use some electricity rather than just my arms. I might have two going really up, quite quick. There we go. That would be getting in, that would cool it down. Now, this is my little tip for you. If you the, most shoe pastry recipes don't say so just, you know, just beat in the egg. I say, uh, as a good friend of mine, Simon Gray, what we did actually, use um, whisks, because you're gonna get it lighter, fluffier, area, more gluten. So um, I would normally use an electric whisk um, at school, um, but the benefits of being at home, I'm gonna use my beautiful KitchenAid mixer here. Um, but if you haven't got that, you can use it. Oh, if you haven't got a whisk, good point, good question. If you haven't got a whisk, you can have a whisk on me. Here we go. My little tip, if you haven't got a whisk at home, two forks, get two forks kissing like that, and you have got yourself an instant whisk. Uh, okay, an instant metal whisk. There we go. Just like that. You see how that's worked in there? You've now got yourself a little whisk. How cool is that? Um, but we're, I'm gonna, because I'm at home, um, I'm going to be using my kitchen egg. So I'm going to put in my hot mix into there. There it goes, into there. I'm going to put that on. There we go. 
that's stirring up. I'm going to add, and I don't have to worry about it, me not stirring it, because I'm using this to stir it now. So that's stirring up. You can see a steam coming off that. And as it's stirring, in goes the egg. Now I know it's not going to cook, cook the egg. I know it's not going to form scrambled egg, because that's continually moving. It's going on there, it's turning around, continually moving. Here it is. Moving around nicely. Now turn that one, need that one. Okay, so that is now turning around really, really quickly. That's beating the egg in, so it's not going to scramble. We don't have a scrambled egg there. We're going to have a lovely, silky, smooth um, shoe pastry for your pretty rolls here. Okay. While that's doing it, um, and while you're doing that, I'm just going to talk about uh, the oven. So if I just show you over here, we need to just preheat our ovens. Let's pop around to the, um, the recipes there. There we go. So there we go. So we're going to preheat the oven. We need to preheat the ovens. So there's a recipe card up there. You just need to preheat your ovens. Um, you need to preheat your oven there to 180 gas mark six. Okay. Um, so while that's doing that, 180 gas mark six. Now I'm also just going to very quickly talk to you about those two proteins that I said. Two proteins that are going to come together. Okay. You've got gliadine and glutenin are in the flour already and what we're going to do is we've added some water and some mechanical action and we have got gluten da, da, da. gluten formation that stuff that is both elastic and plastic so it takes the property of both those the other two proteins and you form this gluten. That is going to form the structure to our, our wonderful shoe pastries. Right, I'm going to put the oven on. I'm going to bring the mixture over and we can start to then um, get these together and we can actually make up a fish roll. So back to the kitchen there. Back to the kitchen. Perfect. That's just turning nicely. Uh, right, here we go. All right, I have got, not scrambled it, but a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shoe pastry. There we go. Let's get that off the whisk, get all that beautiful, beautiful pastry dough. It's silky, it's smooth. We got most of that off, there we go. Perfect. Let me show you that on the camera. There we go. That is a beautiful, smooth, whisked up shoe pastry there for our profiteroles. Fabulous. Let's pipe these. Let's make our profiteroles now and let's pipe these and let's get them in the oven. Then we can work on our creme pâtissière fillet. Alrighty. Back to me. Alrighty. Well done, everybody. Well done. Okay, back to me. Now we are going to work now on making our actual um, fillings, sorry, our, our actual pastry. We're going to get those into the oven for you. There we, go. Um, we need to get those in the oven. So let's do this one. We're going to get down to the stage now. Now here, we've beaten the mixture to put together until smooth, leaving the sides of the, leaving the sides. So that's all beautifully and smooth there. You can see that one there. Um, what we're going to do is we've stirred in the eggs a little at a time to form a smooth paste. Now, my top tip was cool by beating with electric whisk. Well, actually, I've got that from my good friend, Simon Gray. Um, we're going to place the small spoons of shoe pastry onto a baking, uh, onto the baking pan. So here we go. We've got a tray, baking tray there, which has got water and oil on there. It's been greased up nicely. What we are now going to do is we are going to put small amounts on there. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this one. So let me show you those few different ways and a few different things that you can use to do it. So I've got my tray just here in the middle. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to be getting some small bowls, balls rather, of the shoe pastry there into onto my tray. Now, how am I going to do this one? So you can use two spoons. And what you can do is you can actually do something called quenelling, which is like forming it into a ball by moving it from one spoon to another. So that's one way you could do that one, which is fine. That would work. Let me just very quickly show you how that would work. 
Um, so we've got our two spoons there. Oops, I'm gonna wrap. There we go. So we've got two spoons there. And what you can do is you can just use the two spoons and move the pastry from one to the other. There we go. Can you see that one on there? Hopefully you can. And we can just move it from one to the, the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. Well done, yes, on YouTube. It might well have cooked otherwise. You cooked the egg. Okay, can you see that one now? That's formed a nice little ball. And that's one way of doing it and quenelling it. And then we can put those balls straight onto our tray, just like so. I'll move that one down. Um, I'll show you that one. Um, so that's one way, that's quinelli. So moving it from one to the other. If you, now if you, if you have got it, um, piping bags or a piping, if you might have got a home bake piping kit there, um, a home piping kit would be really, really good if you wanted to use one of those. Um, and you can use, um, it comes with lots of little um, bags, piping bags, and you can pipe the mixture in. Now that would be high level for GCSE as well. So it comes with these little bags and you can put them in, pipe into those, put the mixture into those bags with a little nozzle. Put your nozzle into the bag. You put your bag over a cup and then you put, you ease the bag back over the top of the cup and then you can fill it up with your mixture. And we can do that one with the creme patissiere as well. That's one way of doing it. Or you might even be able to have, we'd be lucky if we were at school, we'd have some of these. These are proper big ones, look at these. And I'm gonna use them to show you what we're doing today. This is my big catering um, piping bags. Now, if you haven't got uh, piping bags from a shop or professional piping bags, big ones like these, or, um, and, and you, you still wanted a pipe, you, instead of using a quenelle, using the two spoons to make a, like a circular, almost like a rugby ball shape it is, but you can then move that into a circle afterwards and you put it on the track. Um, you can use, just use, uh, if you've got plastic freezer bags, that doesn't work, so you can just put it into plastic freezer bags, snip the corner of that, and that would work as well. But we want to get the pastry from the bowl into rounded circles onto our tray. So you can spin that onto there, then we're gonna cook them, okay? So um, that's what we're gonna do. So you can use any of those methods. I'm gonna use, I can back, I'm just gonna get a larger glass to put those in. Again, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, the oven should now be being preheated to 180 gas mark six. Let me go and get a larger glass um, for you there. Um, a larger glass, larger glass, there we go. Perfect. Um, so I've got a large glass here, and I'm gonna be putting my piping bag inside that glass, just like so. Pint glass works better. I was gonna sort of thought I had a pint glass there, but I didn't have one. Um, then you're gonna be easing that one over the top. Okay, there we go. In the case, oh. into the bag, into the jug if you want to instead. And we're going to put all of our wonderful pastry, scoop that into there, okay? Um, and then we'll pipe it in. So, using the down. Okay. So you can see what I'm doing there. Let me just move that one down so you can see. Okay, so I've got my... Wonderful mixture there, wonderful silky smooth mixture. And I'm just gonna put that one straight in. There it goes. Oh, beautiful pastry. It's just gonna go into there. Oops, just gonna look at my finger there. Silky smooth, wonderful pastry, which has got lots of water in it to form steam. It's got the egg in there. That's gonna all oh, a bit more food science if you're thinking of GCSE. That's going to denature and coagulate. Mm. You know when you cook an egg, like an egg, the egg white part of an egg isn't actually white for you. Heat, add heat transfer to it. So when you put some heat to it, we transfer heat to it. Whether that is conducted by a frying pan, whether it is. Um, Convected, i.e. you put it through something that's been convected heat transfer. So uh, water, when you 
boil the egg, maybe poach it perhaps. That would be cooking it via heat transfer that's convection. Or cooking your egg via radiation, you might put it in the microwave um, and make yourself some scrambled egg. Whichever heat transfer, conduction, convection, or radiation, that egg white, that clear egg white, liquid clear egg white, will go from liquid clear egg white and it will turn into a solid and it will set and it will become opaque. And that process of it doing that is called denaturing and then it coagulates and sets, a bit like the protein of gluten will set and form a set structure and we put it in the convection oven. Right, okay, can you see that now? Take the glass away, bring the tray back. There we go. And we're gonna be putting the, let's move that one up slightly. We're gonna be putting the, um, oops, that's a little bit from earlier. Let's move that one, it's just falling in there. Let's move that one around there so you can see. That's the quinelle I did there with the two spoons. I'm now gonna pipe with this one. So I've just tied, just in the end up there, holding it over my finger. Okay, I'm just gonna get use the scissors now just to snip a little end off this one. Scissors. Snip the end off and we're gonna do like a little emoji poos. Okay, <laughs> that's the best way to describe this one. Just gonna snip my snip the end off there with some scissors. Okay. And I'm going to pipe these. Now, we want them to be as evenly, um, there we go, I'm just going around, and then down and up. See what I meant about emoji poos? Around, almost like a top of a ice cream, and then down and up. I'm going to keep doing this one all the way around my tray. Around they go, down and up. Round we go, down and up. Round we go, down and up. Now you ideally want the same amount for each one because you want them to cook as evenly as possible. You don't want one, a couple of them to be underbaked. You don't want a couple of them to be overbaked or burnt and only be able to use a, a third of what you actually cook. So you want to try and make them all as equal size as you can. Okay. You see those on the board there? Just going to oops, do another one there. There we go. It's coming to the edge of mine now. All right, so we've got our shoe pastry buns there, and you can carry on doing that one. Now, you get some little bit of water. Got a little bit of water there, if you can just see that, a little pot of water here. With this little pot of water, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick my fingers in that little pot of water. And I'm just going to, on each of these, I'm just going to smooth over the tops. See what I'm just doing there? So we have nice rounded profiteroles. Just smoothing over the tops there so we haven't got any peaks. You know, overcook, burn. We want a nice even bake on these. We want them to be golden brown. Oh, there's another GCC term in there. Golden brown. What we've got going on is there is we have got the flour is, is going to, there we go, I'm just using this for the same time. What's going to happen is we're going to get something called dextrinization. The uh, complex sugars, poly, polysaccharide sugars inside the flour, um, starch, it's going to break down into simpler sugars called dextrins, and that's called dextrinization. That's the browning of your of your any baked goods, whether it's cakes or pastries or you've got flour in there which turns brown, we have then got um, your 
dextralization. Okay, um, let's go back to me. All right, hi. Right, back to me. We are back to the final stages now. And you can see we've now completed. I've talked for a lot. Sorry, I apologize. Um, hopefully you're learning a great deal from this one, whether you're say on YouTube or uh, watching this back at uh, Talking Girls Grammar. Um, we've got lots going on. So uh, we've made them into small amounts. We, um, we're going to then be baking them. Um, so now really, 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 really important when you're baking these ones. Um, you're going to be putting them in for 12 minutes, okay? Um, baking them at uh, 12 minutes at 180. Then you're going to reduce the heat down to 160 for another 12 minutes, okay? So starting off at 180 or gas mark six, okay? Then we're going to reduce it after 12 minutes to 160, gas mark five. Now we are not going to open the oven door. No, 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 no. Because if you think of them as a bit like Yorkshire pudding batter, if you make lovely big things, open them, bleh, flat, right. So we're not gonna open them. What we are gonna do, we're gonna bake 12 minutes at one temperature, then we're gonna reduce the temperature and bake again. Okay, so that's how we're gonna do it. You're gonna do this one right now. Now remember oven safety, when you're putting things in and out of the oven, you do not want you to burn yourself. So try and have somebody there to help you please. Um, and you need to use oven gloves as well. Now oven's gonna be hot now. The oven's gonna be 180, gas mark six, okay? So we need to get these into the oven. Now I'll just hop, skip and jump over here. Um, and let's go and put those into the oven. There we go, there's my oven, there it is. So uh, oven gloves are ready, fabulous. They're all over there ready to go. Uh, here we have. My oven, here's my oven gloves. I'm gonna get these ones into the oven. Right there, there we go. In they go. Into the oven. 180 at the moment, that's good. Yep, that's perfect. Yep, that's good. So it's on 180 already. Leave it to 12 minutes, let's put the timer on. 12 minutes. Perfect, 12 minutes, and then we'll turn it down and we'll turn it down and we'll do another 12 minutes. Alrighty, back to me. Okay. Excellent. Um, so quite a lot of food science now. I love a bit of food science. We do loads of the GCSE, it's brilliant. Learning all about how ingredients work with each other. Then we can come up with new ingredients, new ways of working. We can come up with new recipes, we can adapt recipes. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Anyway, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about the next one. Really posh custard cream. Okay, we're gonna call this one, uh, say, is it, what is it called the name? Creme Patissière. Mm, posh, 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 posh. Let me get it up on the board for you. Uh, creme Patissière. Posh custard. But it, um, it doesn't have to be particularly hard. It's only got three steps to this one. Um, so all my recipes are maximum 10 steps. This one's actually only three steps long. It's really nice and easy. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this one, we're gonna get two eggs beaten with 40 grams of caster sugar. And we are going to be um, getting that all mixed up together. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be adding some of the vanilla and also we're gonna be adding the milk, bring it to the boil. Okay, and um, we're gonna be mixing all of this together. So let's go back, let me get uh, the glass bowl for my eggs. We're gonna reuse the, you can reuse the egg glass bowl from earlier. So save yourselves some washing up. We don't wanna be uh, giving ourselves too much washing up today. So let me go and grab that bowl from earlier. Okay, here's my bowl from earlier, it's just coming. There we go. One bowl from earlier, my egg bowl from earlier. I'm gonna reuse that one because there's no point in doubling it down on that, uh, no point in giving yourselves extra work there. And so I've got in my bowl, in my bowl there, I'm going to be putting in my two egg yolks. Now this is gonna be slightly different to before. So before we talked about, when we did this one, we were talking about um, using the whole egg. We don't wanna use the whole egg for this one. We just want to use the egg yolks, okay? The yellow part, the center part of those, those eggs is what we're gonna be doing now. So let's, um, let's do that one. I've got my eggs here. Fabulous. So I'm gonna crack my, um, crack it so I've got my, I just got my egg yolks in there. And then we're gonna put that one into that one, stir it with, together with our sugar. Okay, let's uh, move that one there. Now, the egg whites, doesn't matter if you get a little bit in there, okay? It doesn't matter if you get too little bit, we really want just the egg yolks. Um, 
the uh, egg whites. What can you use the egg whites? Because we don't want to be doing wasting our food. You can save the egg whites and you can make yourself meringues out of them. Um, beautiful meringues. Um, and if you thought the meringues took ages, they don't. You can do microwave meringues. What you do is you get the egg white and you can see, add some icing sugar to it till it comes together like a plasticine and you keep stirring it till it comes together like a, like a pliable plasticine. Roll it into little marble sized balls, put it onto grease proof paper in the microwave for 30 seconds. You have got yourself meringue. I know it's crazy, isn't it? You can make meringue in 30 seconds, big meringues as well. You can add color to that, add flavors to them as well. But egg whites, mix it with enough icing sugar so it turns into plasticine. So just keep adding icing sugar to the, stirring the egg white until it turns into like a plasticine moldable, um, uh, moldable little cell. Roll it into little balls about so big, put them onto a bit of grease proof paper, microwave 30 seconds. Sometimes depending on the, the strength of your microwave, it might take 40, 40 or 50, but certainly don't do it over a minute because it'll burn the sugar and you'll, um, you, but you can make yourself very quick meringues there for lunch or break. Okay, um, so I'm gonna separate my egg yolks and my egg whites. So I'm just uh, doing that now. So I've got my egg whites are my egg yolks. Now, there's lots of fun ways of being able to separate eggs um, from the egg yolks and the egg whites you can see online. Um, so I'd uh, have a look at some of those. Some of those using um, reusing plastic bottles. If you've got uh, if you've got one of those, you can reuse those, which is quite fun. And you you pop it in and you pull out the egg yolk. That's a fun little way. I am just oh, can you can't really see. Let me move my down what I'm doing here. Um, I have got my um, uh, zoom in there so you can see. Uh, I've got my egg yolk and egg whites there. Um, egg whites, egg yolks, just going to give mine a crack. I'm just using my hand. I'll make it easy for you. There we go. So I'm just using that one. I'm just using the hand there. There we go. Egg whites there. But later on, when we make some, I'm going to make some meringues later on today. I get the egg yolks. I'm just are in there as well. So I've got my egg yolks and my egg whites. And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm now going to measure into that one the sugar. We're putting 40 grams of caster sugar into that one. So uh, let me just measure that one out with spoons in case you haven't got scales close by. Here are my scales in case you, there we go. Now I'm going to add into there, say my 40 grams. So spoon wise, let's do that one for you so you know how many spoons that is. Okay, I'm using teaspoons here, so you know, heap teaspoons. One, two, three, four, five. That should be it, oh no, a little bit more. Five, it's normally, I've just done five in a little bit there, but five, um, otherwise you're looking for 40 grams, so I've got the uh, sugar, and the egg yolks in there. Um, now we need to, uh, what we need to do is we need to beat those together. Um, and then we're gonna gradually add in the flour. Okay, so we're gonna beat those together. So um, what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use my handmade whisk. Here we go. Um, remember how I did that one? So I've got two forks here that are going to be kissing. There we go. There we go. And I am just gonna beat these ones together like that. There we go. Let's do that one. Move the scales out of the way. Let's move the egg yolk whites out of the way. I'm just going to beat up the sugar and the egg yolks. You see that, what I've just done there? I could use a whisk if I wanted to, but I just thought, you know, if you've got lockdown, lockdown, you're at home, you might not have a whisk at home. So you've probably got two forks though. There we go. Little quick little trick there. Little hack there for you. Two forks, you got yourself a whisk. Perfect. That is egg yolk and sugar, 40 grams of sugar, all mixed up. Right, next we're gonna gradually uh, whisk in 25 grams of flour. So let's do 25 grams of flour. What is 25 grams of flour? Um, again, let me just do it by a teaspoon so it's easy for you to understand what that one is. Let me grab that, a little teaspoon. So flour. And I'm going in, we're going in again with just 25 grams. So I'll do it on exactly, so you know exactly for that, for the scales. Let's put the scales back down here. Here we go. 25 grams. There we go. Just gonna gradually 
all over and goes one. That's 10 grams, one teaspoon, 10 grams. Gradually do that, stir it all in. Here we go. You see that there? Just gradually stirring all of that in. Fabulous. Now we're going to put the, the that was 10. I'm going to add the next one to my bowl at the table here. Okay, so I've got another tablespoon that brings it up to 17, 18 grams, and one more teaspoon should do it. Gradually add that one in. You see, we're combining all of that flour and the egg there and sugar. Okay, and my last bit of the 25 grams. One more spoon. Spot on. Three teaspoons. So if you haven't got scales at home, you can still do this one with three spoons. Look at that, I'm making all sorts of mess today. <laughs> we'll clean that one up at the end. Right, stir that one through with my homemade whisk. I want to say my little life hack for you today. There we go, all stirred through. So that is sugar, egg yolk, and flour in there. Beautiful. All stirred together nicely. Now, we're gonna leave that for, to stand for a moment on the side, and we're gonna work on the next part combination that, and that is gonna be putting the milk, and we're gonna be putting the milk together with the, um, let's do that one here. Um, so we're gonna put, using the, the I'm using my measuring cup here, and we're gonna put the milk into a pan, and we're gonna boil it up, okay? So I'm gonna be putting milk in a pan, boiling it up, and then and adding my vanilla to it. So let me go and grab my pan and my milk. That's me. There we go. So on the board there, you can see on the board. There we go. We've done some. We're now on to step two. Let me get myself a little pan for you. Well, big, well some big pans, but uh, I'll do it in a big pan so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got, oh, it'll just cook quicker. Okay, um, so we've got a massive pan there, but you don't need a massive pan like this, just just, you know, just a pan in there. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna add into that the milk. Okay, um, here we go. Okay, so you see on the screen there? There we go. So in my pan here, I'm gonna be putting in the milk and the, um, the vanilla. So milk wise, I'm using 160 milliliters of milk here. So uh, let me just show you what that looks like. Again, it's about half a glass, half a standard glass, okay, um, here. So I'm just gonna do that one for you now. 160 milliliters, what's that look like? There we go. Now, accurately doing this one, you can use the scales. You can actually use the scales to do that as well. Um, that would work fine. I'm going to be putting in the 160 milliliters, in it goes, of milk. Now in with the milk, I'm going to be putting in my vanilla. Here it is. This is the beautiful vanilla. How much vanilla? Well, I love vanilla. You know, I can't get too, can't get any enough of this little pod vanilla. Look at that. Look at that. Can you see the pattern in there? You can see all the seeds. Can you see all those seeds in there? It's beautiful. Let me just zoom in so you can see those seeds. Look at that. Oh, look at that. The beautiful vanilla. I love it. It's gone everywhere. I've got it on the side there. Mm, 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 mm. I love vanilla. Uh, if you can use vanilla extract, vanilla paste, like we said, real vanilla is the key here. And that is perfect. The bell is just going there for the 12 minutes which means that uh, we need to just turn down our ovens. If you're following this live and do, clicking along live with me, it's now time to turn your oven down. And your oven down needs to turn from 180 gas mark six to 160 gas mark five, okay? So if you're following me along at home, let's go do our ovens, and then we're gonna come back and combine these last two ingredients together. So I'm just gonna switch my oven down to 160, put on the timer, for 12 minutes. Okay, timer's on for the next 12 minutes. And I have to say, 
I have to say, they're looking pretty amazing. Um, they really are. Hopefully yours are too. Right. Um, right, Kurt, let's go to answer some questions. Right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Which attachment are you using for your KitchenAid? I was using my whisk attachment for the kiss KitchenAid earlier on to combine this. How much vanilla should I be putting in? I would say, um, if you want to be putting in this one, um, we want to say about a teaspoon's worth of vanilla uh, paste um, or a teaspoon as well of um, vanilla extract would be fine with that. If you like vanilla like I do, then put yourself a little bit extra in. There's so many good benefits to real vanilla. It's really unbelievable. Actually, it should be suppressant. There's lots of oh, it's so, many, so many good things. Look it up. Brilliant stuff. Um, uh, right. So I've got my two things. I've got my egg. Uh, sugar and flour mix. I've got my milk and vanilla mix. We need to combine the two together. So what are we going to do? We're going to boil up the milk now over at the pan. Once it's boiled up, we're going to be pouring the two together, whisking, 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 whisking the two together. Okay. Uh, because again, what's going to happen if we if we don't whisk it and we continue don't aren't continually moving it? That egg is going to form scrambled egg. And we don't want it to form scrambled egg. We want to be the loveliest, creamiest, sweetest, richest, poshest custard cream. Uh, so you're going to be doing that one. Um, so we're going to then we're going to be pouring the whole lot back to the back onto the heat. Bring it up and it will thicken almost instantly. It will be doing something we call well. The proteins will be denaturing and coagulating. If you remember, we talked about that. When the well, that is the long chains of amino acids that make up the proteins are going to unfurl, and as they unfurl, um, they will be able to capture uh, water gases into there. They're going to become. Um, they're going to change the shape. Um, and as they denature, they're going to suddenly then going to coagulate as they come further apart. They're going to coagulate, set um, into a thick cu uh, custard cream. But also you've got uh, liquid and flour going on there and something we call gelatinization. And that's going to thicken it as well to make this beautiful custard. So you've got lots of different food science going on there. Um, that's why we do this lots of year 10. This is a real, really not full of food science. So we're going to be heating the milk up, um, bring it to the boil, reduce it down. Mix the two together. Then we're going to be pouring pouring the two together. Um, it comes, and then as we're going to keep going on the heat there, we're going to pipe it up. So let's go back to my kitchen. Let's go and do it. Let's go and do it now. Um, let me move move it all back to the kitchen there. Um, okay. Um, hopefully you can all see us up. Let's move forward. Zoom in again. Okay. Good. And you can see my oven there, so when we get them out as well. Um, excellent. And I'm just going to move that around so again you can see my kitchen there and see what I'm doing. Good. All right, let's go and do this. We've got uh, two things to bring over. We've just got the, um, the egg mix there, the egg and the flour mix we've got going on there together. So we've got those two to, to see. And then we've got, as well as that, we're going to be having our um, milk. Okay, so hopefully you can see me there. So you've got milk and you've got um, the egg mix there, okay? And we're going to be combining those two. So first of all, let's remove our shoe pastry. Mom, we don't need that anymore. Put that in the sink. So we're going to heat up the milk and the vanilla, okay? So I'm using the milk. Let's put that down so you can see. We've got milk and vanilla in there. I'm going to bring this to the boil. Remember, you're in charge of the heat. The heat is not in charge of you. Uh, so the heat's not in charge of you, you're in charge of the heat. I've got my pan on there with my milk in there. I've used a heavy base, a heavy flat uh, pan there just so it speeds up the process for you there. You can just use a small saucepan. That would be absolutely fine. Um, that's in there. I'm going to use a spoon. Let's use a wooden spoon, another wooden spoon. There we go, wooden spoon. Uh, won't use a metal spoon because a metal spoon will conduct heat. We don't want to conduct heat because we will burn our fingers. Um, so um, I've got my wooden spoon there. I'm just going to stir the milk and the vanilla together. Oh, that's looking good, looking good. Then I'm going to pour that into my egg mix, but continually whisking. Um, I might I either use my two forks that I've got in there already, or I can use a whisk. There we go. Or again, I can use an electric whisk, or I can use um, a KitchenAid mix, whatever you wanted to continually aerate that mixture and whisk that one up. Here it is, it's nearly boiling. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, you'll notice that I've got something else going on over here for the chocolate later on. I have got another pan with a large bowl, glass bowl on top of the 
pan. Now, this is for our chocolate. So I've got a chocolate here, and we're going to be putting the chocolate into that. Now, we have to be real careful when we're heating through chocolate that we don't overheat it. So we're going to create what we call Ban Maria, okay? It's a water bath. So we're going to be putting water into this one. So let me put some water in it. Just enough water so it leaves a gap between the bowl and the base of the bowl and the water. So there should be a little gap between them, about a centimetre and a half, maybe two centimetres worth of water in there. Um, that's not touching it. That bowl's going to go onto the top. And then into that, I'm going to be putting the chocolate in a minute. Right, my milk's done. I'm going to be pouring the milk into uh, there. I'm going to combine the milk and the those. I'm going to stir those together. Here we go. So I'm pouring the milk, hot boiling milk, into the egg, and I'm stirring it, 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 stirring it. You see that? Stir it up, stir, 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 don't stop stirring it. I'm going to pour the rest of the milk in. Here we go. Okay, stir, 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 stir. Don't let it cook the eggs. We're going to stir, 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 stir. It looks quite liquidy. Can you see that on the camera there? That's looking quite liquidy at the moment. But don't worry about it looking liquid. That's going to form and make a really lovely, thick um, creme patissier posh cream in a minute. But we're going to put it back on the boil. So just make sure it's combined. I'm using my handmade whisk here. You see that? Two forks. But I could have used the other one. An electric whisk if I wanted to. There we go. It's just going to combine. All of that's combined. It's quite liquidy at the moment, but don't forget it's going to denature and coagulate the proteins inside the egg. It's going to gelatinize the starch and the flour in there, and that's going to make it. So here we go. I'm going to put that one back on the heat. All of that's in there. Perfect. Back on the heat. Okay, heat's on. Stirring, 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 stirring. And all of a sudden, that's going to burst. The starch is going to burst, and you're going to have it thicken. The protein is going to denature and coagulate. That's the long chains of amino acids, the protein blocks that make up um, the egg. Uh, the little building bricks of protein are all going to unfurl on their long chains of amino acids. Unfurl, they're going to be denatured and coagulated. They're going to thicken your custard, basically. Um, right, okay. That is starting to thicken now. Starting to thicken. Starting to thicken. Here we go. We have nearly got our custard. There we go, keep stirring it, don't stop stirring it. Just keep stirring that one on the hob, just keep stirring, just keep stirring. Beautiful, beautiful custard coming together now. There we go. It's starting to thicken, it's starting to thicken. We're nearly there, nearly there everybody. Boom, that is thickened. Wonderful, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Conducted heat through the pan, it was boiling away. Convection through the water, and we've got yourself a beautiful, smooth custard. I'm going to be just putting that one back in the bowl so you can see that one. Uh, let's see. Beautiful, everybody, absolutely beautiful. Oh, look at that. So we've gone from something that was runny to something that is thick. You see that? Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely, creamy, smooth. Smells gorgeous, really vanilla -y and beautiful. And that is our posh custard cream. Okay, um, let's go back. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to be piping those into our profiteroles. So we're going to get that piped inside the middle of our profiterole buns, which are in the oven. The, uh, now, if I've timed this correctly, or I have, We've got two minutes left to get these out of the oven. They're going to be coming out of the oven in two minutes. We're going to get them onto our, our cooling rack. When we get them onto a cooling rack, we're then going to make a little hole in the side and a little slit hole in the side. 
we're then going to fill them up with our beautiful um, creme patissiere, our lovely creme patissiere. While that's doing it, let's hop, skip and jump back over to here. Okay, put that one into the side. Um, let's go back to this. So I've got water in there. I'm going to be putting the chocolate into there. So here is my chocolate. The chocolate's there. I'm going to break up the chocolate. I'm going to put it into the top. There we go. Then it goes. Chocolate broken up into the bowl. So you can use a plain chocolate or a dairy milk chocolate. I don't mind whichever you use there. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, whatever you prefer. So you can see there. Give a look there. You see that's all broken up into the bowl there. Chocolate in the bowl. Uh, all broken up into little cubes. Great way of using up any leftover chocolates you might have from Christmas, anything that's kicking around. You need to use up any of those. Um, here we go. So in it goes. That's going to go on top of the water bowl. Remember the bath of water. The water's up to about this point in there. I'm going to heat that up. In it goes. Conducted heat into the pan. Convection heat going on inside the pan as the water becomes uh, hotter, less dense, rises, cools down, goes, uh, cools down, more dense, falls. That's happening inside there. There's some convection going there. But it's then heating up the, this bowl. Right, convection, uh, uh, heating up the bowl. And then when that's heating up the bowl, it's going to melt the chocolate. But it's not going to burn the chocolate because but chocolate, if you heat it up too much, too quickly, what's going to happen is it's going to split. So we're going to use this way of heating it up. So that is chocolate being made ready there. Good. Clean up the work surface for that one there. Fabulous. Chocolate's there. Creme pats there. Profiteroles nearly done. We are nearly ready to go, everybody. Put this whole thing together. And we have got one minute. Okay, there it goes. We're done. We're done. Let's get the oven gloves and I'll show you what these look like. Okay. And we'll bring them over and you can have, have a look at these wonderful profiteroles. Hopefully yours are looking just as amazing as these. And there we have them. What did I say? Look at that. Can you see those on the camera there? I love profiteroles. I love a profiterole. But you just love a profiterole. They are looking wonderful. And this is, uh, you know... You can put them in for a little bit longer if you want, but you see they're slightly brown at the top for gesturization. They are beautiful profiteroles. Love the profiteroles. Okay, I'm going to take them. I'm going to put them on the cooling rack. So they're on the cooling rack to cool down. My creme pat's cooling down. My chocolate is melting. Let's just give that one a little bit of a stir. Uh, I'm going to use a uh, yeah, I'm going to use a mouth spoon with this one because this is this is not going to get too hot at the top here. Here we go. Just give that a little stir. Yeah, that chocolate is going on well. Okay. Come back, come on. Right. Come back to me then. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. Here we go. Last few minutes now. We're ready to put all of this together. Fantastic. So we're gonna put our whole thing together to finish off um, it. So we have got the custard. Now if you're using the custard later on, little tip here for you, put some clean film just over the top so the skin doesn't doesn't uh, form on the top. You can do that one and then you can reuse that one at a later stage if you want to. If you get too much custard and you want to use that custard for, I don't know, something like a fruity bake or a fruity pie, that sort of thing, you could use that later on by just putting a bit of clean film on the top. So we've got all three elements now. Um, we've got the pro, we've got those, these wonderful, 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 it's nice and cool now my tray. Um, I'm going to be putting those onto a cooling rack. Here's my cooling rack. Um, let's get those onto the cooling rack for you all to see. Let's have a look. Right, uh, let's cool that down there. There we go. Okay, so we're now going to be putting all of these elements together on the board here. Uh, and we're going to be getting the profiteroles, the chocolate profiteroles. So I'm just going to take those off. I'm going to put those onto the cooling rack. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then put the whole thing together. We're going to put the put the filling into these ones, beautiful filling into these ones. Let me just get these ones off the tray. There we go. And we're going to fill those with uh, the creme pat. And then we're also going to you see that so light and fluffy, a load of fluffy, the light little clouds. Can you see that one, little cloud? There we go. Onto the cooling rack. Let's get all these off the cooling rack. It's the important thing of being able to uh, grease your tray beforehand. So don't stick to the tray. Just going to take all of those off and then we'll get these all filled up as well um, and we'll do that one in a bit and i'll be finished in the next couple of minutes okay let me just have a look at that chocolate over there 
they'll be finished and yep they are nearly that chocolate is nearly just melted over there as well and we'll finish that one and we'll get those ones all done and dusted i'll show you that go over to that chocolate in a minute and we can get all of these combined and have these to eat together oh sorry i'm not let me move the camera down i'm not gonna move the camera down so let me move the camera down uh, okay, so moving the camera down to me, to the profiteroles. There we go. These are the profiteroles on the tray there. Uh, what we got here, we're going to get these. They've Some of them have actually got little holes in there underneath. I'll just turn this one over. You can see that's got a little hole in it already, which we're going to fill with the um, lovely creme patissiere. Um, so some have already got little holes. If they haven't got little holes, see they've just come a little hole there when it's broken away from the tray. And um, that's fine. If it hasn't got a little hole, you can just... Use a little knife there just to make a little hole in there. All right, just a little one just so we can squeeze the creme patissiere into those ones. So that's my shoe pastry. Um, now we need to work on the creme patissiere. This is the creme patissiere we made earlier, that cold custard. It's thickened up now and cooled down. We're going to fill that into them and then we're going to put the chocolate on the top. So back to me, back to me, back to me. Okay. Fabulous. Hey, back to me. Uh, right, we have got to go and fill those up. So how are we going to do that one? I'm going to use that uh, piping bag. There's a piping bag. I'm going to use the little one now. It's a little domestic one that we got from a supermarket. Um, piping nozzle in the bottom there. Just going to snip, going to put the... Let's find the glass. Where's my glass? Oh, there it is. So it's easier to do it if you put it inside a glass. Nice little hack there for you again. Put that one over the top. Fabulous. You can see that's in there now. I've got a nice little hole in the middle there. So I can then put my creme patissiere into there. So I'm just going to put the creme patissiere in that one. You see that one? In it goes. Beautiful creme patissiere. In that one goes. Fabulous. Look at that. Creme patissiere in there. Beautiful and creamy and clear. Because they're creamy and silky. Like that. It's like a silky, creamy, beautiful vanilla. Mmm, smells gorgeous. Just, you just want to eat this raw, honestly. Just, just eat it without any profiteroles. It's just, it's so good. We've got fluffy, light, cloud-like profiteroles. I'm using all my descriptive adjectives today. Let's, uh, let's get some, some English in there with our descriptive adjectives. I like a good descriptive adjective for food. There we are. When we're doing our sensory analysis. How it smells, how it tastes, how it looks, how, how you hear it. Um, all these good sensory analysis, right? So I've now got that one into my bag. I'm just going to snip the end of my bag with the pipe, pipe nozzle in there. Okay, that's going there. And I'm just going to squeeze that through. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the end of the nozzle. Can you see that there? And I am just going to squeeze that in and fill up the, from the base, the underside of my beautiful profiterole. Oh, that is now beautifully filled up there. I'm going to do the same with the next one and so on. Just going to make that little hole in there. I'm just going to fill that one through there. That is beautiful. Look at these. I love the vanilla. I love a good profiterole shoe pastry. All right. And you just need to continue doing that one for each of them. Each of yours, just each time squeezing that you see what i'm doing there each time just squeezing that in filling up to the top really filling up to the brim or fill to the top with creme pat and who doesn't like a good creme pat there we go and just keep on squeezing it all the way in so you've got it all the way through okay so continue doing that if you wouldn't mind and we can get to the stage there where we've got some beautiful shoe pastries all filled up with creme patissiere final thing then we need to go and get the chocolate uh, the lovely melted chocolate we're going to dip those in the chocolate and then we are done so let me go go uh jump over there and go and get the uh chocolate that has been melted in that glass bowl that's on top of the bain marie um uh i think your screen has frozen Oh, sorry if that has over there. Someone said the screen's frozen. I hope that you could do it. Uh, so let's go and grab the chocolate. Okay. Good. 
Now the chocolate bowl will be hot, so don't forget to use oven gloves. There we go. There is my melted chocolate. Can you all see that one on the screen? Hopefully you can. Oh, beautiful melted chocolate. We've got some beautiful melted chocolate going on there. Uh, okay, so we need now to, um, we're going to be dunking our chocolate into there. So if I show you there, um, let's zoom in. Okay. Can you see that one there? Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got chocolate. We've got profiteroles. Here is my chocolate profiteroles. Can you see those ones? Here we go. It's a little chocolate profiterole. Um, so we've got chocolate and profiterole. Chocolate goes into... Let me put the, sorry, put the profiterole into the chocolate. There we go. And there we have got... Chocolate profiteroles, everybody. We have got yourself um, chocolate on top of there. It's going to cool down and harden. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. I love this. Let's go and put that one in there. I'm going to just dunk it in. Oh, look at that. Can you see that one on the screen there? More chocolate profiteroles. We are loving a chocolate profiterole. We're going to do another one. Oh. And another ooh, bit of chocolate on there. <laughs> there we go. Can you see my chocolate profiteroles? Da, 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 da. They are looking wonderful. Let me zoom out one more. There we go. Chocolate profiteroles. Da, 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 da. Yeah, see to see. Hopefully yours are looking a little bit like that. Mm, 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 mm. Um, right, back to me. Final thing, excellent. You've been amazing today. You've learned so much today. We've been through so much teaching. We've talked about raising agents. We've talked about gluten formation. We've even managed to get in there some heat transfer. So um, lots to learn today. And I'm really thankful for you sticking with it today. Lots of things there. Uh, uh, it, it was all unfrozen. It's so good. Someone just said, oh, I can't have me. And it's all unfrozen. Uh, so that's it. Um, right, final thing then, before we, we move on, after you've done all these, as we've said before, the most important thing now, from my point of view, so that you, you don't get told off, is washing up and cleaning up, okay, washing up and cleaning up. Please, can you make sure you properly wash and clean everything up? Um, things to think of today, not so much knives, but you need to think of hot things. So some of these things are still going to be hot. Even my, so um, I've got my here, my... Chocolate is still really hot, hence why I've got oven gloves, which now I've got chocolate all over them. Um, they are hot, okay, so be careful. But you do need to keep collecting all your equipment together, washing up everything. Use some hot soapy water, please. Hot soapy water. Um, so make it as hot as you possibly can without hurting yourself. Lots of um, soap in there, detergent. So make sure you put a plug hole in the sink or you've maybe got it in the washing up bowl. Fill it up with hot soapy water. Clean all of those things down properly. Um, I'd wipe down your sides, all the flour off your sides before you start washing down your sides. Otherwise, you're going to end up with something that's really chill, really um, glutinous or over sticky sides. Okay, you don't want that. So wipe down your sides, uh, wipe all the flour off your sides before you start washing and wiping down your sides as well. Um, leave everything to dry. Don't overstack things. We've got bowls and saucepans today, so be careful not to overstack them when you're putting them on uh, your drying racks or drying area. Okay, we don't want anything falling off and hurting yourself, especially not glass bowls. So be careful when you're washing those up. Put them up so they're not going to fall, stack them nicely, or you might be putting them in the dishwasher. A bit cheap, but you might be doing that. Make sure you clean down everything, clean it all dry down with a tea towel, um, okay, and put everything away so it is nice and neat. You have now got yourselves five minutes to get those, start clearing up everything. Hopefully, your profiteroles are looking as wonderful as they possibly can. Um, but five minutes left, the less lesson there to do your cleaning up and washing up and ask me any questions you want to do. If you've got any questions at home, please feel free to post them either on YouTube or um, post them here on uh, Teams from Talking Girls Grammar. Um, I'd say I hope you've, you've enjoyed this one. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love to know where you're watching from this morning. Uh, please just let us know where in the world you are. I know last, uh, earlier in the week, we had some people from Brazil watching this, which was fabulous. Um, and we've got people from Loughborough to Leicester. So let us know where you're watching this if you're watching this back on YouTube. Uh, any questions? Uh, let's have a look. It's Talking Girls Grammar School. Uh, any of you got any questions, more questions for me there? Please put them down the side. YouTube, just place those along the bottom or down the sides. That would be fabulous. 
Um, any more questions from anyone before I let you get on and enjoy some beautiful chocolate profiteroles? But it's not just a tasty snack. We've got lots of tasty food science involved in that as well. No? Everyone's happy? Thumbs up. Let's put some thumbs up if you're happy. Uh, oh, we're watching it from Weymouth. We've got people watching from Weymouth. Big shout out to Chloe uh, from Weymouth this morning watching us on YouTube. Great. Uh, I've got to do one big shout out for all those girls at Talky Girls Grammar School who are at Talky Girls Grammar School, all of those uh, of key workers and the like who are at school today. Thumbs up to you. You've asked me to do your thumbs up. So thumbs up to all of you who are watching, um, who are at Talky Girls Grammar School today and all of those amazing support staff who are also uh, watching as well from uh, and looking after the key, key workers as well today from Talky Girls Grammar School. Thumbs up to, uh, say, Chloe from Weymouth today, uh, who's watching us on YouTube. Um, fabulous. Um, right. Uh, any more shout outs before we go? Anyone want to do any shout outs before we go? All right. You've been amazing, everybody. You've been really, really good. Uh, stay safe, be good, keep cooking, and I will see you very, very shortly. We're doing some more of these for next week. Thank you very much, everybody. Well done, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.